All right, man, so you're asking me what changed my mind on um, two things, one forward of center, and then the other thing was the mechanical broadhead. So, I mean, that's that's like, uh, that's two particular things, um, obviously separate issues. We'll start with the forward of center. Uh, and the forward of center thing for me was settled with uh, Alaska Ed doing the straw experiment. You know, when he showed the exact same weight on a shaft flying through the air as he moved it back versus as he moved it forward and then you know with that weight to the forward even with no fletching on it it went further you know having greater flight stability and then when he added the second weight on there and having the straw go even further that was uh, that was a real eye-opener for me now the one thing that that I, I'm not fully ignorant of though is even having a 100 grain broadhead, um, that is a concentration of the weight. You know, you figure the rest of the arrow is five something grains per inch. Now, all of a sudden, within one inch, you have 100 plus grains. You know, I, I think it's just a matter of, of taking it a step further, and that that sort of weight would then have to be tuned for for what you're sh what you're shooting and for maximum effectiveness. The uh, the other part of it that cinched it for me had to do with the application towards uh, youth archery and it's something I've just barely scratched the surface with you on because I know you're not all that interested in kids but um, if if we can have a young archer instead of having them wait until they can pull 40 pounds uh, be able to have a tackle setup that allows them to hunt when they're say able to pull 30 or, or 25 with the right arrow, uh, that was a real eye opener for me. You know, if I can if I can increase the lethality on a on a bow that's that's only pulling 30 pounds to the point where uh, my kid can go hunting with me that much sooner, that's a you know that's a that's a good thing for me. I really like that and I really latched onto it. Now, as far as dropping the mechanical broadheads, uh, the the credit for that needs to solely go with Ashby and the specific part of his study was when he was going over the science of uh, cross-section resistance and how how a broadhead should not have any wasted space so in the case of my uh, my rage broadhead what ends up happening is when they deploy um, you got about an inch or so that you're not using any sort of inclined plane at all and then it just abruptly goes out and that instead of allowing it to work like an inclined plane you're spreading out that area now granted the blades themselves will serve as an inclined plane and they're you know but they're going sideways and it kinda of works against things um, the other part of it is I didn't take much convincing because in a in a stalking type hunt um, I'm having the blades pop loose on me and I don't really like that and that's even with me being aware that they may pop loose. So that's pretty much the story. I mean, that and you know, sometimes when you don't when you don't know as much as as other people, it, you know, you can kind of listen to them and, and pay attention. You know, I can't I can't speak from experience on one end saying, well, I shot a deer with a broadhead and the damn thing walked because I hit his shoulder, or man, I swear I hit it in the right spot, and I can't say, well. I uh, I shot it with this other type of broadhead and it killed every one of its generations back to the beginning of time, <laughs> you know. So that is that, man. Hope that hope that suffices for you. And uh, I wish it were more of a sexy story, but it is what it is, and that is the truth. And I reckon I'll talk to you talk to you later. <laughs> All right, man. Take care.